what are the residency obligations of a person and what are the circumstances under which you may lose your permanent residence status. And this is Sajad Malik. I am a barrister and solicitor, a business and immigration lawyer in Ontario, Canada. Now, as soon as you become a PR from that date, from the date of issuance of permanent residence status in Canada, you must remain in Canada physically present for 730 days or more in a period of five years. Now, for example, if you got your PR status on January of 2020, 1st Jan 2020, then within a period of five years from that particular date, you must have spent 730 days in Canada to remain in compliance with the section. If you do not meet the requirement, there's a possibility that at, at an examination, you could be stripped off the permanent residence uh, status. There are a few exceptions. If you're working for a Canadian company offshore on their payroll and there are certain specific requirements of that, then you may be able to uh, still comply with the residency obligations despite not having lived in Canada. If you're living with a Canadian spouse uh, who is a passport holder and you're living with that passport holder in a foreign country in, a, in another country other than Canada, then you may still be able to meet residency obligations. Similarly, if there were certain compelling circumstances, then you could always request humanitarian and, con and compassionate considerations which did not uh, let you complete those those obligations, the residency obligations. But you, these are highly discretionary applications and the officers may not agree to you in this context. Another thing which I have noticed most commonly is that people mix up the status with the permanent resident card. Your status of permanent residence doesn't have anything to do with the PR card. PR card is a, uh, is a travel document and permanent resident, your being permanent resident is a status. So there are, there could be circumstances in which you might not have renewed your card, but you have met residency obligations and you are still a PR. There could be circumstances in which you considered that you were not a PR after your PR card expired and you never came back to Canada. 10 years later, you discovered or you met a lawyer who advised you that you could still be a PR and then you try to check your status and you were a PR. Then in those conditions, there are under certain circumstances, you could still come to Canada. And if you are able to come to Canada without uh, an officer's uh, reporting to the IRCC that you never met residency obligations, you could still uh, renew your PR card after you have spent 730 days. Or you could still claim uh, or submit your Canadian citizenship application after you have spent 1095 days here. Now, there is a misconception. Most of the times, they're, they're the people who are especially, who are well established in their countries, they have excellent jobs there, they have uh, excellent businesses there, then they start relying on, uh, on the fact that, look, I came to Canada, I tried to remain here for a couple of months, I couldn't get a job, I couldn't get a nice business here. Therefore, since I had no means of living here, I went back and this is a justifiable reason for me to return and not meet my residency obligations. Now, this kind of situation won't uh, gather you sympathy of the immigration officer. So you have um, breached residency obligations and they won't contain, uh, condone that kind of uh, a breach of residency obligations. Similarly, uh, in these situations, we have often seen that sometimes there are compelling circumstances, like you were really blocked and there was not in your, nothing was in your control. The things were beyond your control. There were strong humanitarian and compassionate reasons behind it. So in those cases, you can always request that the immigration condones that um, breach of residency obligations. And in, in a few cases, they could still overlook it and they could allow uh, your breach of residency or they could condone that residency. Now, uh, one more thing which I would like to share uh, is that now immigration is moving to towards automatic monitoring of your uh, permanent residency uh, requirements. Right? Previously, when you would apply for a permanent residence travel document or for PRC renewal or some other kind of, or you were entering board, port of entry, an officer could examine you and then determine that this person has met or not met residency obligations. But now onwards, in a few months time or maybe a year time, they are making it automatic. Now, once you are entering Canada or exiting Canada, Canada your information would be recorded in the system. And as soon as uh, you have not met 730 days out of a five years period, you might get automatically flagged and you might get a com computer generated letter that you didn't meet residency obligations. So please explain, otherwise we are going to cancel it. Similarly, now they're moving towards the system in, in which they won't be relying on your applying for a PR document or coming at the port of entry, but then automatically 
uh, they would have information that this person has not met residency obligations in the five years period or this person has spent a lot of days outside now that now there is no theoretical possibility that this person could still uh, meet 730 days obligation. The, I'm talking the second uh, case. I'm talking about those people who secured permanent residence, then remained outside of Canada for four year, four years, and in the fifth year they try to enter Canada. In future, if they try to enter Canada, or if a computer determines that now there's no way that this person could complete 730 days because he has been out of Canada for four years, you could uh, get automatic computer email surprises or uh, these kind of um, you know situations so beware of your residency obligations if you believe that there was a genuine compelling reason that you couldn't enter or if you ha are in breach of residency obligations or you feel that in future you will have such a situation that you won't be able to uh, meet those residency obligations and if you wish a lawyer to evaluate your situation, to advise you on this, and to make a strategy for this, please don't hesitate to contact my office, and I'll be very happy to assist you in this uh, in this situation. Thank you very much, and our contact detail, date, details are displayed at the end of this video.